D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So I just finished, literally, uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 1. And I kind of liked it. I don't know. I have to be honest. I liked season one a lot. And then I found out that they just stole that whole storyline. So I was like, oh, well, I mean, maybe I liked it because it was somebody else. Uh, Elsa's story. And then um, season two, though, I didn't dislike season two. I mean, season two, I thought wasn't as good as season one. Um, and I really don't like the. I don't like time travel. Uh, it just like... I just don't like it. I, I, I never have and everything. So then this season might be a little problematic for me, traveling to the future and everything, but we'll see. I just want to say before I get started, though, that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, YouTube is going to do their annual bot cleanse and old account purge. And, you know, there will be some collateral damage. There always is. I don't know why. Um, but I just ask that you please like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. So why don't we just get started on this breakdown of this uh, episode. And so first we get a glimpse of this gentleman from the far future waking up each morning uh, courtesy of his uh, like alarm parrot, which I thought was weird, and each morning placing what looks like an antique Starfleet uh, uh, box, like a suitcase, on a table um, and then just sitting there and they don't give us any other inclination of what exactly his job is or what he does he's just sitting right there at that desk just staring off into space i i saw that and i was like huh i know they'll bring it up later on but uh this is so uh there was that so then michael burnham crashes into the unknown and she shoots out of a wormhole which looks an awful lot like the babylon 5 wormhole in my opinion and she slams into a starship piloted by uh charles book book which I like the actor that plays uh, Booker. I can't remember his name and I didn't write it in my notes, but I didn't mind his character overall, but I'll I'll get into him a little bit more as this uh, breakdown goes on. Um, but I just have to say uh, that a lot of people are bringing up online that his character's name is kind of like Book from Firefly slash Serenity. And I think it's bad and a little weird to take such an iconic character in the sci-fi genre and give your character the same name uh, is, I just, I find this very weird and I find it hard to believe that you didn't know what you were doing. So I just find that like really weird. Um, also, I think that the ships in this uh, so far are very ugly. I don't like Book's ship. I think it's on the outside. It's it's gross looking and it's just like a weird crescent shape. It's so weird looking. I didn't like it. And I have to say, like, I'm sorry, like if she hit that ship, why is she not going splat like a bug? I just, I'm like, I'm like, how is this suit that you're wearing able to protect you from impact i mean come on so i don't know i don't know anyways so michael succeeds at uh, at the last second of coming up in uh uh to uh, figuring out her suit and she lands in a big mound of dirt on the planet that she's above and she gets out uh out of her red suit and then she finds out her mission was a successful one and she had jumped to the year 3188 now after a primal scream of celebration which was so weird um she gets back to business and she programs the suit to go back into the wormhole before it closes sending a signal back to uh 2020 uh 2200s whatever it was, uh, which Spock saw at the last episode in this, uh, or the last shot in the season uh, two finale. Um, and then she takes all of her emergency supply, supplies before she does that, and she begins to walk to Book's crash shipped, um, which is smoking off in the distance. Now, when she arrives uh, at this, like, at the shore, at this shore, um, there she's ambushed by Book, um, and they fight, and she wins, and he doesn't want to know her name, and she says she needs to find her ship and crew and everything. Um, and it appears uh, her cell works on book. Um, and as she takes, uh, her, as he takes her inside uh, his uh, ship, um, he tells Michael that she's she broke his uh, dilithium recrystallizer. Super fun. Uh, and she, he needs to get a new one, and they'll need to travel to a mercantile marketplace. Um, and then on the way there, Book reveals that he is a courier tasked with carrying objects between uh, hollow buyers and hollow sellers. But more importantly, he 
tells Michael that the combat she's wearing is a relic of the past as the Federation collapsed more than a century ago. At some point, uh, the, he says the galaxy took a hard left. Um, and then as uh, he puts it that way, and then uh, due to the galaxy-wide disaster, dilithium, a vital component for warp travel, is now extremely scarce and valuable. Um, space travel, uh, for the most part, goes at sublight speed, which I'll talk about that in just two seconds. And the, unable to maintain its size under uh, such conditions, the Federation and Starfleet diminish to almost nothing, and this is all... Uh, because of what is called the burn. And then when Michael asks for an explanation, Book explains that the Federation all but disappeared after the burn. Michael doesn't know what Book means, uh, and then Book explains that the burn happened 100 to 120 years before Michael arrived in the future, um, and it, it happened all at once. And most of the dilithium in the galaxy went boom. And my, as Michael mentions, dilithium is an essential component in the drives of any warp-capable ship. Now, I have to just say, as I was going to say before, that the Federation, <laughs> that they, they're all like secondary light speed. I just have to say that not all spaceships or starships in the Star Trek universe used dilithium-powered warp drives. In fact, I was able to find out that the Romulans used artificial similarities to power their warbirds, and there is a slipstream technology. Um, and there's all kinds of technology, and a, and a true fan and a good writer would either know this or at least do research to make sure that their their writing is solid. And it's, it's kind of a little annoying that they didn't do that. And then dilithium was a crystallized substance found in only a few places planets where it was mined for the use of warp drives and the crystals regulate the drives matter antimatter re reactions um, and if aethium suddenly failed any active warp drive would become unstable resulting in the boom to which book is referring to michael is burnham is she's stunned into silence by book story and michael denies the collapse of the federation and everything and she's all like it's not just ships it's it's a it's a thought or whatever i can't remember exactly what she said and they make it to the marketplace uh run by a surprising partnership between the andorians and the orions now i just want to say real quick the andorians look weird but they have to because they need to be 25 percent different it's a whole legal thing and i've never liked the orions i think they're such a weak alien species as far as looks go i think that you just take an actor and you paint them green like what is that so so weird so anyways so this is a dingy yet bustling hub, a place where clearly anything goes for the right price. Now, that includes trickery, and as we see when Book traps Michael in a stasis beam, uh, he nicks all of her supplies, wanting to pawn it off to get a hefty supply of dilithium, which has become currency in the 3100s. And Orion and an Endorian capture and interrogate Michael, spraying her with a truth serum uh, but they get more than answers out of her and Michael becomes very uh, trippy giggly messy speaking at warp 9 and that part was really weird in my opinion I personally didn't like it I thought it was stupid but whatever anyways and then Michael leads the uh, these other couriers to uh, book um, and then he's you know getting punched and everything and then Michael punches him and yada 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 but when everyone turns on her the two are forced to work together and fight and a fighting ensues like boo 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 and everything now, they light speed skip, I mean transport from place to place, uh, trying to get away, but are tracked until they jump into water because I guess they can't uh, track them in water. I don't know. Anyways, so Book continues to surprise uh, Michael as the two dry off and he begins to chant hum nom 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 rhythm rhythmically and his head glows and everything and this plant comes out of the water and he squirts its little weird aloe goo on his hand and it's supposed to uh, heal Michael's wounds. Now just as he's lost the uh, guards, they've they, lost the guys chasing him 
Michael is able to finally uh, open up to him about her situation, and he lets her try to contact the Discovery in exchange, but receives no response. She gets no response. So when they get back to the ship, all the couriers are there waiting for them. They force Book to uh, decloak and then open up his ship, and it's revealed that his stolen cargo is a giant bioluminescent worm known as a trans worm, and it's evidently hungry. And as it draws the Curio's in a trance by glowing and everything before devouring him. It only, you know, it eats two of them. Um, but then when facing Book, it, uh, Book gently, like, he touches it or whatever and with his hand and it calms down. And then it turns on out that Book has this power that allows him to connect with all life around him and its natural balance and its, its family. Uh, he's got a family of poachers. Uh, who disowned him for not having a taste for blood, ah, blood, and everything. And instead, we see uh, what book, uh, like, his efforts merit, and it's this scene. They go back to this planet that's, um, you know, a sanctuary for these translucent worms, and they're swimming around and everything, and then... He's all like, it's their mating season. Or so he's basically like the universe's Dr. Doolittle, but glowing and everything. So he's grateful to Michael Burnham for helping him. And Book takes her to a courier waypoint that's used to be a Federation relay station. Uh, but the station is far from abandoned as it turns out that it is the home of the man that we saw at the opening scene. Um, and this liaison searches for the discovery only to find out uh, it hasn't come yet. And its window of arrival could span for the next thousand years. Michael is devastated, but hearing the liaison talk fondly of the Starfleet from the past keeps her flame kindled. Now she asks for his help in continuing the search for her crew. And as they unfurl a Federation flag, which was in that little suitcase, what a waste of time, uh, she vows to not only keep hope alive, but find others who will do the same. And I just have to say, this episode was pretty weak. I mean, I kind of liked it, but I'm the whole time I was just like, come on, when are we getting to the point? Uh, and the point, and the, the last scene was kind of nice. I actually did like that last scene, but at the same time, I'm all like, wh when are we going to get to this? Because I've had enough of this nonsense. So that is my breakdown and review of a season three, episode one of Star Trek Discovery. Uh, what did you guys think about this episode? Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Do you like Discovery? Do you not like Discovery? I like uh, Discovery so kind of, um, like I said before, that first season I liked a lot, but they stole that idea and which I'm not a fan of. And then, um, Picard sucked, and so did Lower Decks. Oh, I was so disappointed in Lower Decks. And Picard. I was looking forward to Picard, and it was bad. Uh, so anyways, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. I will see you guys on the next uh, Star Trek episode. You guys have a good day. Bye.